Okay. Um, so thanks everyone for coming to the working group progress meeting. Um, we'll go through each of the groups with um, some uh, updates from the groups um, looking towards uh, goals and progress towards GCC and any blockers. Um, here are kind of additional details and links for today's meeting. Um, and I think without further ado, we'll jump into the first group. So back end working group. Yeah, I mean, so these were the uh, goals for GCC. Um, that's ongoing collaboration of the tools working group. Um, we pretty much have fast API deployed and unspecialized. I think Nate's putting in the last uh, few tweaks, but usegalaxy.org is now running with uh, fast API. Um, yeah, um, I think the systems group uh, didn't really mention a lot of things that need to be fixed on Pulsar. So I, I assume that's I mean, I don't, I don't know, either done or it's in progress, but um, yeah, uh, there wasn't much that had to be done. Um, yeah, I mean, we interacted with the UI UX group, um, with Sam, uh, to make sure that the API endpoints in use are, <clears throat> are optimized for performance. In the end, it was mostly a question of how the front end will retrieve data. Um, so I'm going to call this done, but of course, that's always a work in progress. There's always some things that could be improved. OK. Um, yeah, I mean, since that wasn't very specific, I wanted to outline also the things we have accomplished. So deferred data is uh, pretty much complete. So you can upload a data set that doesn't enter Galaxy's object store. Um, so for that, we have uh, refactored the job setup code, so it can now run without access to the database, um, which is important if the metadata uh, for job isn't available. There's a user interface, uh, there are salary tasks to um, materialize deferred data. So I mean, if a data set is, I mean, not in Galaxy's object store, metadata doesn't exist. Um, the, the process of de-deferring it is the materialization, so that for that we have salary tasks. Um, there's interesting use of salary tasks for uh, running the actual upload job processing um, to run the metadata task and to run the job finish task. So all of that is expressed as a salary pipeline. Um, that is a lot faster for small jobs because the salary code is kind of hot. It's now an interpreter startup overhead. So that made our API tests round about three times faster than they were before. Um, I mean, just as a sort of naive benchmark. Uh, we've completely eliminated the use of the old upload tool. Um, we have a description in Pydantic open API for the fetch data tool, um, which does a ton of things, some of which we haven't exposed in the user interface yet, but this is the first step. Um, we can build dynamic resources. We, ha we have a whole framework for doing this now in Salary. So uh, examples of that are we can create collection archives that way. So it's not um, Nginx or the Galaxy web process that creates these archives. Um, we can export histories that way. Um, we can create uh, invocation reports, sort of PDFs, for instance, that way. But there's also ongoing work to actually export whole workflow invocations. Uh, we've removed support for whiskey, so new whiskey. Um, we, in that process, we dropped about 10,000 lines of redundant API code and uh, also removing some Galaxy interactive environment code that are now completely superseded by interactive tools. Uh, we've removed chat data types. Uh, we've removed the package installation code, which are some of the legacy stuff from back when Galaxy wasn't using Conda. Um, yeah, there were a lot of uh, workflow API fixes, um, and some of the workflow APIs have been ported to FastAPI. Um, yeah, so that's 
it's the update from the backend group. And I mean, collaboration is always ongoing, like with tools, workflows, UI, UX. Well, let's have a slide for that. <laughs> How does a user pick if it's deferred data or will be ingested? Um, there is a checkbox um, in the upload. And is that that's in that's released or will be released or? Yeah, that will be in the next release. Awesome, awesome. And the um, um, I mean, you said you continue to work with Systems Group on Pulsar issues. Um, could you comment on what's working, what needs to happen? Uh, I think the ball is firmly in the Systems Groups uh, park currently. So we're not really aware of things that don't work um, beyond some really, really edge cases uh, that, you know. Okay, well, I, we can save that. Maybe we can save that discussion when they present. Yep. Cool, excellent, excellent. Okay. Um, can we, yeah. Thank you. So this is the slide we showed pretty much last uh, last time and just go through it to reflect on which of the points we have achieved and where there's still some missing issues. So most important for us, of course, was a single stable history. It's default now. And I think we exceeded uh, the feature parity was a goal for the conference, but I think we have exceeded that. Um, and we also benefited as we expected uh, from the unblocking of the development, so much more people could contribute to it. There are a lot of refinements going on. It's really nice how it developed. And particularly, the advanced filter options are good. Um, we tested with 100,000 entries. It locally, it works well. The bulk operations was also a huge project, um, and that's also completed. And we adding additional bulk operations to it. So not just delete all the data, all the selected data, but also change the data types. I think it's also already in depth. So that worked great too. So that will be two important uh, features for the presentation we anticipated uh, for the conference and have that ready. For the uh, workflow editor, we um, have, this is going to be 2209, but the, the code is already uh, there. And what we'll do is we finally remove the, the, the workflow editor Mako and embed it directly as view component. So that will make it possible in principle or bring us much closer to the point that we can create an, inst uh, create an instance of the workflow editor without having um, to do API calls in fact, because the data can be just provided as props ideally. And when it comes to the next point, first class display components for data and visualization, it's still in, in progress. Uh, they are all kind of, everything is a little bit connected with this idea of removing MACOS and jQuery. And we made, I think, really good progress on it. And there will be even much more for the next release. But unfortunately, we don't have view-based visualizations yet, which I'm a little bit, Maybe it's not that critical, but it, it would have been nice because we anticipate to have a workflow um, a visualizations um, session and it will be hands on and it would be nice if we directly could show view based visualizations. But that's something we're still looking at if that will be possible for the conference. So other than that, I think um, the rest is non critical. We have uh, the e to -E end to end testing is in progress. The storage dashboard is in there in its basic version, but it's fine. It works. And um, the next point, the auto-generated bindings for fast API endpoints is not available yet. I think that will take some time, but it was good that we already listed this early so we can like plan and anticipate that too. Uh, final aspect we had here was we wanted to do more better visualizations of the entries and kind of con start to connect the items in the history in a, in a meaningful way. And particularly the first thing was here just to highlight inputs and outputs, and that's partially complete. The UI part is entirely almost, or is complete, but some of the data is missing. So we get the inputs at this point and we can highlight them. If the API would also provide the, the outputs, and I know we are working on it, 
then they can be highlighted as well immediately. Yeah, and then if you can go to the next slide. Thank you. So we have some additional developments which are noteworthy too. Uh, we have replaced the Scratchbook with a much more modern window manager, works much better. We have upcoming replacement of the backbone page layout. So that's how the initial pages actually at the root are constructed with backbone routers and so on. We replaced them already with view and view routers. So there will be a much more consistent architecture for the, how the client is constructed. Uh, it will make a lot of things much easier. And uh, in that context also, of course, we removed Makos and jQuery and made very good progress, I think, on those items too. So hopefully there is not much more left. I mean, I think the biggest jump on that topic is going to come for the next release though. Uh, there are very uh, several refinements of the history appearance, little details, but they come with a lot of cool tests and they really, although it's just a touch of the, sometimes it seems like a small change, but it, it made the entire uh, history much smoother. And I really appreciate that people contributed these like small, but very smart refinements to it. Uh, we have significant improvement of the tours. Um, also other people contributed also from the back end um, to improve how tours are handled and that they're more consistent, how the selectors are. So that was also pretty good. That was a good collaboration, I think. And then we have other improvements to the UI or around uh, components, invocation views. Some are still in review, some PRs, but these developments are coming. And mostly we worked really closely, thanks to um, Marius and Dave and also others and John, very closely with the backend group, of course. And it would be interesting to see, um, it makes sense in this stage of the development. Uh, it would be, of course, interesting to see if we can collaborate with more groups in the future. For visualizations uh, on the previous slide, do you have kind of a driving examples? Um, uh, so some of the visual, some of the visualizations that we currently have, you know, if you go to a visualization page, they need to be refined. Yes. Yes, and uh, this is in the same context exactly. Um, so basically what this particularly emphasizes is that currently the visualizations work in such a way that a function is called and then we um, it doesn't have to be backbone but it's mostly a backbone class which is then loaded it requests the data and then it throws renders however the visualization wants to render the data and I think um, we need, if we would have um, view-based visualizations, so it can still be a function initially, which calls, but it should produce a view-based visualization. I think with that, we could then revisit some of these visualizations, which need refinement, embed them into this better structure, wrap them as view, and then clean potential issues out. I think it would make sense. Do you, it would be good maybe to follow up with the with a list, I can probably also go through all the visualizations. And I know some were already mentioned, um, don't wanna take the whole talk on that topic, but uh, it might make sense now regarding your comment to have a list and make sure that there are not major issues with any of them. We can or discuss the this during the UI group meeting, maybe next time. Sounds, um, sounds good. I think a connected thing is that the visualizations themselves should also show up when you click on the eye icon. I mean, that's something we discussed in Montpellier. Right. So currently, if you click on the eye icon, everything is defined by the data type. Uh, all the rendering is actually so, sort of server side. Um, that was also part of it. That you know, if you don't have a way to click on the eye icon and display the data raw, um, visualization should show up in the center panel. Yeah. So we do have a clear plan and it's, it's connected, but yeah, that was a pretty good description of it, of um, also my understanding of it. Well, allow me to also say um, thank you and congratulations for getting the new history display out. <laughs> it's a huge, huge, huge accomplishment.
Yeah, Thank and just, I appreciate it. A lot of just, people just, help. Yeah, just, just just everything because you know we were really worried about UI half a year ago, but now it's uh, well. If I'm in a really bad mood and I want to cheer up, I go and I look at this and it's fantastic. So thank you. Thank you for the, the entire UI group. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, that's us. Um, so our... Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, so our uh, goals slide uh, roughly reflects what we had in the previous meeting with a few additions. Uh, so first of all, we are conducting the release testing for this release. Uh, everything is underway. Uh, the team is formed. We have a great team. I have to say that almost everyone volunteered this time and actually uh, one person couldn't even make it simply because of scheduling conflicts but he uh, they volunteered so that was uh, a very pleasant surprise uh, we are going to start testing any day uh, as soon as uh, main is updated we're ready to go uh, the testing plan is done. We have identified all the relevant uh, PRs, all the relevant high priority items to test. We have our, heads, our, our, our hands full. It's a huge release, but it looks like uh, everything should be uh, according to plan. So no surprises there. Uh, tutorials and presentations for GCC. So the one uh, change compared to what we initially planned uh, three months ago, uh, we uh, were going to do uh, a talk on how we test in Galaxy in general. We decided to postpone it simply due to uh, prioritizing. We don't have the bandwidth for that this time we will do it eventually. It's a massive undertaking and we decided to focus on the two new tutorials. Well, one is completely new and it is huge. The other one has a, a major new section in it. And then we had a lot of infrastructure updates. So uh, the other two items for GCC are uh, underway as planned. One is the new tutorial, how to write automated tests. This is uh, being worked on. Uh, the other one is the new section for the how to test, uh, how to add a new feature to Galaxy tutorial. And the new section is how to test the model. Uh, and in addition to that, we had uh, a variety of um, testing, overall testing related updates, updates to the testing infrastructure and lots and lots of tests, thanks to uh, mostly Marius and, and, and John. Uh, so let's see, we had um, enhanced, test, enhanced testing infrastructure and documentation that was primarily done for the uh, testing of the model and migrations. There were approximately, I don't know, 1700 lines of code deleted, 1700 lines of code added. The, these updates are mostly uh, boring. They are refactoring, but they are critical for the testing infrastructure overall. Uh, everything else, uh, John, maybe you could help me describe this in, in, uh, uh, in more detail. Uh, the remaining five points. Um, I don't. I, I don't think any of this is uh, super high level. Uh, you know, we, we added. We're trying to unwind the tool shed, so we added some API tests for that and a framework to run them. Um, we added a bunch of new uh, GUI testing, tour testing. Um, I, I think that's enough. So yes, a lot of workflow tests, uh, test for workflows, both Selenium and API, uh, some uh, infrastructure for just tests, uh, packaging tests, and the rest John, I believe, has, has already mentioned. So that's our update. Uh, just one question, probably question actually to Nate specifically. So are we updating main with, the, with this today? Uh, so are we going to have new history on main today? I'm trying uh, desperately to do that, but we keep running into small things that have to get done before we can finish it. But okay. we're at the last couple of things now. Yeah. 
This may be an impossible question to answer, but John, do you have a sense of like what coverage we have for testing? I'm sure the I, core functions are well tested, but I don't have a great sense beyond that. I do not, and I should have that number. <laughs> I have it. I mean, we, we run it on every test. Uh, I mean, we don't really have code coverage for the front end, but for the back end, um, and then it excludes a couple of things. It's about 62%, something like that, which is pretty good coverage of the main branches. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Is there a way to kind of identify, you know, kind of out of the remaining, what, 38%? Um, which of those API calls are kind of most popular to kind of prioritize them? Uh, not really. <laughs> I, I mean, with additional instrumentation, probably, but uh, it's also hard to say. I mean, I, I, if I mean, so there's code coverage. Um, where you can see sort of line based where we have coverage, where we don't have coverage. Um, nothing of high importance really strikes me as not having coverage. Um, there's also a couple of things that we only run as external scripts. Uh -huh. uh, so those never receive coverage. So, I mean, I think the effective coverage is even higher than that, but you know, that, that's not what we measure. Got it. But I mean, the fact that you came up with a specific number, 62% says that you've, you've, you know, you've tried to measure this, um, at least at a high level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, um, what we're doing is for every test uh, that runs on GitHub Actions, uh, we also measure code coverage. Um, and, uh, okay, so for the project total, that's 61.64%. I, I mean, I can I can drop that in here, and you know, if you're really interested, you can uh, you can go and like open the individual files and folders and see where we are. So, for instance, uh, Galaxy has 65% coverage. The toolshed has 11%. So that brings it down to 61%, right? I see. I see. Um, and then you can go to the API, for instance, and, and see okay, where where do we lack coverage? Um, so the API itself actually has a higher average coverage at 72%. Uh, the controller methods, so these are the old style ki kind of server-side rendering. They only have 35% coverage um, because we just, I mean, we got better writing tests over time. Yeah. Um, that, that reflects this, I think. Okay, okay great. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm delighted to hear that, that there's sort of a careful accounting of those. All right, that's me. Uh, so, so we are mainly been working with other working groups as our primary mode of operation for the last, uh, <laughs> for the last little bit. And part of that is the projects. The tools working group has been very heavily uh, working primarily with, with projects, which is something that we're going to continue to do, but it's going to be much less from, from the point of view of the tools working group attending something so much as the tools working group consulting and helping out as necessary. And there was, there was a discussion in Montpellier about the, um, about the, the groups being for the project rather than, uh, rather than the tools working group showing up to everything. So that's gonna be the push. We will still help out on those. Uh, and these are the ones we are currently involved in. We're gonna start working a lot more with the IWC, Marius Meyer. Have been planning to meet on that and haven't specifically done that yet, but we keep intending to. Um, but in general, we are continuing to work, but stopping being the primary people attending these in favor of the projects being primary. So next slide on that, please. Um, I made this before everyone started naming it goals for GCC. Uh, so in general, we are currently working on reorganizing of the toolshed using the uh, using bio tools. Um, we have a uh, an Excel document that we shared on some of the channels a little while ago. We are about ninety percent of the way done through that in terms of tagging tools that did not previously have bio tools tags. Um, uh, Tyler, who is uh, working on that with me, and I should be done with that by the end of the week. Uh, is the goal. There are about 
uh, one, one, about one in five of the tools on that list do not have an associated bio address. The question here is, are we adding EDM tags? Are we adding um, new bio tools entries? We're gonna work with that. A large number of those are simply uh, Galaxy specific tools, like text reformatting things that don't have specifically associated um, bio tools or just our, our versions of a bash scripts that we have added into Galaxy. So the question is, do we want to add just a generic bio, uh, Galaxy bio tools entry, which we can use and that'll clear up about half-ish of the ones that don't have the tags and we can focus on it from there or what we want to do with that, um, as well as uh, a design for a method of tool uh, browsing outside of a main server so that someone can can uh, design their own um, tool panel, not necessarily for use on one of the main servers, but more easily being able to pull in a large number of tools for use on their own instances and have that as, as a built uh, list, as, as a built toolbox toolkit to pull in for their instances. We don't have the specifics for how this is going to be particularly implemented, but that is the current request and we are working on figuring that out. Uh, with the reorganization of the tool panel, uh, do you think we'll be able to have like a first pass on this by GCC or how much help do you need? and? Uh, in terms of the reorganization of the tool panel, uh, we already have the ability to have uh, to have specific tool panels, and we have the implementation of these tool tags already. They are they are something that they can exist in the wrapper already. So, from what I understand, and this one's much more of a discussion with between us and the UIUX group uh, about how to uh, to implement this. The organization should be fairly simple. But I don't. I don't want to be the one to speak on that. The answer is that we should make it feasible by GCC. But I don't know if if it will be implemented by GCC. Okay. And then Alex, I mean, presumably this new tool browser site would also. Um, Feed off the UI team to kind of help with the the the, the user facing components. Yeah. But when you say design, um, are you trying to design the UI or sort of just um, sort of give sort of a conceptual design about how that would work? I think mostly it's going to be the conceptual part because we have standardized method, standardized UI methods at this point and and looks. Um, at, at, yeah, I, I don't think that that it is the tools working groups uh, function. I don't think it's the greatest idea either for us to be the ones designing the UI side of that necessarily. I mean, I I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't think we discussed it in Montpellier, so we should have another discussion about this. But one, in, I mean, one reason to have actually these tool panels is that you know where to find things. So if every mm -hmm. user has their own tool panel, I don't know if that's a good idea. That's why I was saying not to implement it on, on the main servers, but for someone yeah. to be able to go to this tool uh, to this tool site and say, I, I want to take everything with a bio tool that is associated with this tag and throw it uh, with these three tags and, and come back with, uh, with a tool XML, uh, that, that I mean, a tool YAML that they can put on their own server. Oh, I see. Right. No, this this that part would not be implemented to me. This is more for someone to be able to explore on their own and see what Galaxy has outside. And it'll also make it more easy for if a user needs to add a tool, they don't have to necessarily go through our GitHub repo or the tool shed itself to, to see the tool. They can see it and they can make the request. Obviously, we're not going to be implementing every single tool that everyone requests onto all of the major servers, but it lets them see what we have available.
Marius, I think you're up for workflows. Yep. So the goals we had, um, I mean, we only partially got there. Um, so the main thing was that we wanted to have a collection of 10 sort of showcase best practice uh, workflows. And I think we can still do this by GCC. Um, it's just that attention went into developing things on the infrastructure side. Nevertheless, thanks to the collaborations, we had the two BGP workflows that are already merged and published. Uh, there are four PRs in progress. Um, Anton contributed a, a generalized version of the variant calling workflow that we had initially developed for uh, SARS-CoV-2. And I mean, we need more contributors. Um, we've over were overhauled a little bit the contributing process, so it's uh, easier than ever. Um, so if you if you know how to run a workflow, hopefully, and you know how to use Planemo, hopefully you should be able to do this relatively quickly. Um, yeah, we had this idea of integrating notebooks and conditionals a little bit better. Uh, we didn't have time to get there. Um, that was uh, so we also wanted to um, have parts of the workflow editor available as a standalone component um, that's in collaboration with the UI UX group, but again, uh, there was no developer time to actually do this. Um, we wanted to do a dedicated section about Galaxy workflows in the um, Galaxy interface section of the GTN. I think that may still happen slash there's some work on it. I know I've signed up to um, to do some of that. Um, we wanted to do a tutorial about workflow reports, so that's done. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I mentioned Planimo workflow test uh, in it. Uh, that's a really cool command um, that once you've run a workflow with small data, you can just point it at an invocation and will uh, generate the skeleton of everything that you need to, to test that workflow. And uh, I mean, ultimately that's like 90% of the work, 95% of the work to have the workflow be uh, best practice and in the IWC. And um, yeah, I mean, that's where we're at. So, so in order to get more contributors, have you thought about looking at recently published papers and reaching out directly to authors? No, I, I mean, I don't know. Uh, no. <laughs> okay. I don't know if I want to do this. I'd rather go and pick good workflows from other uh, communities and just do them in Galaxy. That okay. sounds like a much uh, much more streamlined effort. And uh, you know, I mean, we, we we sort of know what to do, right? I mean, we need a human uh, a variant calling yeah. workflow. We need a GWAS workflow. We need an RNA seq workflow. We need a chip seq workflow. We need an attack seq workflow. Um, so that that's kind of I think our core area uh, and I mean RNA-seq like assembly, uh, uh, transcript assembly, transcript quantification. Um, so do, mean, you have a, do you have a list of these other than in your head somewhere? Yeah, well, it's GTM. If we- Yeah, so um, I don't- I, GTM. The GTN stuff- Might not be the best. Uh, I mean, so the, not, there's a couple of different good. things. Uh, so it, it's well explained, right? Uh, why certain things are done. Uh, we'd still have to do a bit of review uh, to see, you know, is that still the best practice in the community? Um, is, uh, I mean, you know, uh, is it all set up properly? Because, you know, I mean, the, those workflows, they are basically just extracted from the history. So that's not necessarily how you would run a production workflow. I mean, you're not going to do QC at every step, right? You just, um, collect all the QC reports. Uh, I mean, yes, we should definitely link them up, right? Um, where, where possible, but I'd, I'd go with something that is benchmarked already. So I don't know, all the NF course stuff has so many. I was going to say, so like next flow workflow. Yeah. Migrating I think there. there are several approaches here. One of them is, so what you're talking about right now is a complete kind of a best practices, uh, whatever we call them activities like the whole, you know, attack seek analysis. But we also need to work on actually uh, popularizing 
small work clothes to do relatively slow but cool thing because there are a lot of quick things that you can do with galaxy that people don't even realize and so i'm actually uh, i i really want to find time to start doing this because there are i don't know we can do like one a week because there is like endless supply of these just just i mean I, hon I honestly think we can do 10 a day right <laughs> i mean that's yeah, exactly wrong <laughs> well let's be realistic uh, because we need to do this them sort of a at the level of, uh, you know, they, they need to be <laughs> understandable by our consumers, which is a hard task. Yeah, um, I mean, we have a, we have some examples of small workflows, right? So we have, for instance, the uh, fetch data workflow. Um, exactly. Where you just exactly. provide a, a list of accessions that parallelizes over the whole list of accessions, and at the end, it spits you out a collection with a pair end data sets and the single end data sets. Um, well, it, it, yeah, I mean, I don't want to occupy time, but it's just because, uh, you know, with things like monkeypox, for example, like quick analyses that you can do, it, it's it's amazing that you can do with Galaxy. It's just people don't know about this. That's our biggest problem is that we have all of this already. Just people don't know that you can actually do it very easily. That's what we need to focus on. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. Um, the other thing is like, uh, Good description. Um, you know what are the important parameters? Uh, how much resources do you need, right? If you don't run it on .org, um, yeah. Well, it, it's like home improvement videos. You know, sometimes you you sort of how do you fix the goddamn door? So you just you go and you look at this and it's like ah, of course, you know, I just need to change these two screws. So I think the, the some of these workflows need to not necessarily concentrate the parameters, but just explaining general idea. It turns out, for example, that if you want to like uh, build a global phylogenetic tree of all coronaviruses, you don't need to do multiple alignments. You can just pick representatives, covariants, construct consensus, and you already have multiple elements, you just build three on it. It's a workflow from six steps. So these kinds of things, It's this is exactly the home improvement video kind. Sounds like a great uh, collaboration fest topic. Definitely. Yeah, if we can also pull off sort of giving this home improvement videos that are sometimes fine because the people who do them, they kind of, you know, they're a little bit weird and they do things in a certain way. I guess we need to, we need to also try to do presentation in some funny way that people actually want to watch this, but it's easy to like, say. Like TikTok uh, videos? To, something like that, yeah. Uh, I mean, another thing that we should maybe see is if, I mean, the, I'm not really involved in the Elixir thing, but I know there are, you know, scientific communities that focus around a certain thing. And it also sounds like Alex is doing pretty well there. Uh, so it would be great if these, you know, scientific communities were actually uh, doing Galaxy workflows and contributing them. Uh, we can give credit now easily. Um, we can even have them, you know, just be collected under the IWC umbrella in uh, in uh, Docstore. Um, they can still be hosted by them. I mean, all the credit goes to them. We have the creator metadata. We have the organization metadata. Um, maybe that's something Bjorn could get a, a foot in the door. I don't know. They have the workflow already. Um, But as a, I mean, as a general point, we got to tap into the community to encourage them to contribute because we'll, we'll just never have enough resources to, you know, engineer other people's workflows. So we got to get community engagement. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sort of thinking like, you know, sometimes there are these live coding things uh, on, I, I don't know what, I mean, I, I never ever watched one, but I hear they're popular. So maybe we should just do like, okay, we're going to live build this workflow because I think I can be a killer argument for Galaxy, yeah. Yeah. All right, I mean, I think I've taken up enough time here. Thank you. Uh, 
Delphine, I think you're up next. Sorry, I was muted. Um, hi, so uh, the main goal we had before DCC was uh, to develop the hub uh, so that Nick has been working on. Uh, so the goal is to host all the uh, hub content uh, for all instances on, on .org. Uh, so the hub is live uh, on gashproject.eu uh, slash eu slash event. Uh, it hasn't been announced, but, so uh, the goal is to make it public uh, during GCC or just before the GCC for people to find the informations. Uh, there is still some work to be done on the content and some features to be added. And uh, the long tail of the project is going to be to port old content uh, and feature into the new um, hub, which likely will go is going to take a month. Um, next slide is um, Outreachy. So the intern started on uh, May 30, 30th. So we have three interns, one funded by us and two extra funded by outreach funds. Uh, the topic that are, um, that this intern are working on are uh, development, climate science and uh, well-being in the community. Uh, so they just started a couple of weeks ago and they'll be there until the end of August, 2022. Um, Next slide in outreach news. Uh, so the paper cut have been canceled. Uh, instead, we're going to organize regional co fest about uh, four times a year. And we're going to assign tickets for small uh, feature development in working group meeting uh, if they are needed uh, urgently. And we have the community call that are organized every two weeks. Uh, you can see that on the uh, working group calendar on Google Agenda. Uh, finally, for GCC this year, so the training uh, compared to other year is in prior with the conference instead of being uh, three days before the conference. Uh, so we have five tracks for four days, so about 20 different trainings. And uh, we're gonna have a co fest of three days and uh, we are working on identifying for a working group uh, entry level project that we can uh, propose to people who want to participate to uh, outreach and training projects. And that's what it for us. How's your stress level over GCC? Uh, me personally, uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be good to have training in person finally. I think it, this relieve at least for me a, a huge load of stress. I'm more stressed by online training. Uh, otherwise stress is super high all the time. So <laughs> nothing to compare with. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so just a small uh, bit of update here. So uh, we've been going back and forth trying to schedule a meeting. Um, looks like it'll happen Friday or Monday uh, with the usegalaxy.star uh, server admins and other people involved and new one who wrote uh, the TPV. Um, so this is what we're going to use to do uh, sort of higher level scheduling. Um, it's already in use and uh, use Galaxy Australia. So you um, is probably going to deploy it next and then and then hopefully I will uh, before the, the conference, but we'll see. Got a lot to do. Um, we have the new stack uh, um, in progress in, in deployment on usegalaxy.org. So as of yesterday, um, day before, we were running uh, G Unicorn and Fast API 
with uh, Gravity, which is our process management, config management uh, tool that we that we wrote um, and have been putting a lot of work into in the last couple of months. Um, and then we are attempting to update 2205 for the latest dev, actually, because we haven't branched yet um, today, but having to build some wheels because they're not available on, on PyPy. Um, and that'll get us the history. So I said maybe done, but it's not done as of this call, but hopefully by the end of the day. Um, and then uh, Keith has been working on uh, Helm updates for the Kubernetes deployment of Galaxy. Uh, and as for the Pulsar questions that came up earlier, um, we don't have any outstanding major issues with Pulsar. Uh, and so uh, there's nothing really to uh, work with currently, but we'll certainly push those over to uh, the, the back end group uh, we encounter any issues. Could you say a bit more about the uh, TPV and um, yeah, so so um, Galaxy has sort of built in. It has very uh, limited functionality in controlling, you know, how you map uh, tools and executions to particular destinations. So you can say like, you know, this tool BWA, for example, all BWA jobs run at this particular job destination and those have to be like statically defined with a certain amount of memory and cores and stuff like that. Um, so there's also in Galaxy a dynamic um, uh, job um, destination system where you can write, you know, sort of arbitrary Python code to uh, have much more control um, and, and make smarter decisions about how your jobs run. And so lots of Galaxy admins have written dynamic rules over the year, uh, over the years. Um, we've had multiple iterations of them. Um, a year or so ago, I wrote a brand new one uh, that we were using on usegalaxy.org. Um, the EU uses uh, something that Helena wrote called the uh, sorting hat. And then Australia had some homegrown stuff, but uh, needed um, a better system. And so that's what this, this TPV is. Um, it's, it's a nicely uh, designed system. It's very modular, um, designed to be general purpose um, so that anyone can use it and plug in the components that they need. So uh, for example, it, it allows you to uh, write your own methods for determining like what the usage on a particular cluster might be. So you can decide, oh, I'll send it to the one with the least load um, because we don't really have meta scheduling. You know, there's no there's no layer um, below Galaxy that's like, you know, I'll just submit my job out into a, a, a cloud somewhere and that cloud will figure out like the best place to run it. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're always having to try and figure out how to do that best in Galaxy. And that's what the, the TPV is supposed to solve now. But when you say it's a global scheduling, will there be exactly one TPV for every Pulsar or will? There'll be one per Galaxy server. One per Galaxy server, okay. Yeah, right. but so they can tie into the same database, for example, like, um, so Australia is using their um, essentially the stats that they put into Influx and then, and then serve with uh, view with Grafana and stuff about their cluster utilization in order to uh, query and figure out, you know, what the best destination for a job is. Uh, and, and so we can, we can all, uh, on all the use galaxy.star servers potentially tie into the same database to figure out, okay, you know, this, this Pulsar destination has a backlog of a hundred jobs. So we're not going to send any there right now. I see. I mean, it sounds amazing. Um, <laughs> what's your sense of um, what will be available by GCC? I, yeah, I think it's a good piece of software. The difficulty for both EU and and you know the US server are that we have, you know, I, I have like a gigantic file that uh, of of all kinds of special cases about how our tools run currently. Um, and, you know, we run jobs on 
uh, stampede attack. We run them on uh, bridges at PSC. We run them on Frontera, we, you know, Jetstream. We have like six different clusters that we can run on. Um, and so porting all that logic over and then also saying like, here's the amount of memory and cores and, and so forth for each each tool at each destination that we might run. Um, that's a lot of work. So that, that's the main thing. I think the software itself uh, is great and is going to, to fully fill the, the needs that we have. Um, it's just the, the time to get it up and going. So does the TPV then work with standard clusters as well, not just uh, Pulsar based or? Yeah, so it's just that it, it itself is just a di another dynamic uh, job rule. So okay. it's, it's above that entire layer. Okay. At the end, all that TPV spits out is use this destination. Okay, excellent, cool. Yeah. And one comment about uh, updating today. If you don't update today, are you going to update tomorrow before a long weekend on a Friday? That sounds scary. Yeah, before I'm out for vacation <laughs> next week. Um, but yeah, I will because it's got to get done. So okay. I'll, I'll fix whatever is broken. Just leave us some notes on uh, how we uh, we shoot the thing in the head and restart it. <laughs> yeah, the, the cluster is, or the playbook is not 100%. Uh, uh, just if there are problems, you know, find me. <laughs> be in a, on a boat with no internet? No, I won't be on a boat with no internet. And the boat with very little internet? <laughs> no, I'll have excellent internet all the time. <laughs> Hopefully we don't have to use it. Yeah. Thanks everybody for organizing those updates. Yeah, sorry, are there any other questions? I mean, no question, but uh, regarding the TPV um, or somewhat related is, I think we're also gonna get the resource requirements into the Galaxy tool language. Um, so what that lets you do is describe minimum, maximum amount of resources as well as uh, expressions. So, um, I mean, I mentioned this to Nuan and uh, we thought this would also connect well with TPV so that we have sort of, you know, uh, tool author defined default, sort of the tool author knows, okay, this tool is gonna work well with this many cores, this much RAM. Um, expressions would allow you to sort of say, okay, based on the input size, you know, you could, pick sort of the maximum cores based on the input size for a small file for an aligner, you may not want to reserve 128 core node, but if you're aligning like a thousand X coverage human genome, you may want to get that 128 core node. Um, we can already do this also within Galaxy and it would remain possible to overwrite this, but I just wanted to mention that this might be a good place to put sort of default uh, reasonable resource requirements, which I think are very handy. Um, if you're running, for instance, a Kubernetes cluster that can auto scale, um, you, can, you can get reasonable defaults by default. That's the idea. Very cool. Awesome, thanks everybody. If there aren't any other comments, uh, maybe we can close out an hour and three minutes early. <laughs> I think it's good. I think it's good. I look forward to seeing uh, many or all of you in what, about a month's time, uh, in Minneapolis. Um, you know, as we kind of finalize demos and things, like, you know, obviously we'll, we'll need to stay in close communication, but it's just been outstanding progress. I'm really excited about all the um, all the accomplishments that were presented today. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, guys. Have a great day.